Hi there, this is Jean Roman with For Dragonflies and Me. Thanks so much for joining me at this week's podcast. As always, I'm super excited to be here sharing gardening, cooking, organizational tips and tricks, discussions on healthy lifestyles, and of course, having conversations with incredible entrepreneurs. Each week, I love to start out with how I met my guests, and of course, today is no different. Well, back in the fall, I received a very interesting email invite to an upcoming conference taking place in Dearborn, Michigan, hosted by a local organization, Access. I had already worked with this agency during my time in Dearborn with both the the DDA and the Chamber of Commerce. So I was really excited to attend this conference. As I read the details and description, to say the least, I got even more interested. The conference was geared towards female entrepreneurs, which is right up my alley, so I registered right away, and I am so happy I did. The conference, cleverly titled Lead Her Ship, was intentionally designed to host a smaller group in order to have a more intimate feel and allow the attendees to chat and get to know one another. I was there representing the chamber I worked for and was able to give a quick talk on the benefits of small businesses joining their local chamber of commerce. Now, I would love to introduce my guest today. So welcome Aisha Maxwell, manager of the entrepreneurship program at Access Dearborn. Welcome. Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity to join you on your podcast. Um, It's great to be here, and um, I look forward to answering whatever questions that you may have as it pertains to the work that we're doing in our communities. Oh, that's awesome. I I just cannot tell you how excited I am to chat with you about the programs Access offers, along with how you can help guide new entrepreneurs into the world of small business ownership, but not only guide them, Aisha, you also help them with applying for grants and other funding. And now I would love for you to share with my listeners what Access is and who they are. Absolutely. So um, Access, we're actually this year um, celebrating 50 years of community service um, in Dearborn and the surrounding communities that we service. Um, Today, Access is probably one of the most comprehensive Arab American community nonprofits in the United States. So we have over 10 locations with more than 120 programs servicing Metro Detroit. Access offers a wide range of social economic, health, and educational services to a, di- to a very diverse population. And so um, our program, the program that I actually am involved with here at Access is called our Business Development Program. It used to be called our Growth Program, okay. and it is situated within our Workforce Development Division. Okay, well, that's super interesting. And I have listeners all over the country, actually the world. Is access available in other states? And if so, where? Uh, But if not, are you aware of any other agencies or organizations like access? So access, there are other Arab American driven initiatives across the globe, across the US, but access is actually uh, supporting the Arab American community. And in terms of a nonprofit, we are the largest in the United States. So I'm not familiar with where these other agencies are located, um, but I do know there are a few others out there, but Access holds the title of the largest <laughs> currently right now. Yeah, that's um, incredible. Especially because we have over 120 programs servicing, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but we service not just Dearborn, we service the Metro Detroit area. And we actually are considered a regional um, human service or social service agency because we do operate in other counties beyond um, Wayne County. Okay, well, that's really interesting. And I, um, Aisha, can you clarify, access is available for, for everybody, not just Arab Americans, that's correct? That is absolutely correct, Jean. Access originally started 50 years ago to support the... Um, the growth of Arab Americans at the, as they were landing here in the Dearborn community. But of course, in 50 years, we've grown to be much more than that. So we will essentially provide services to any um, group of people within the counties and the communities that we have representation in. 
Okay. That's, you know, that's really good to know because I, I think maybe for some people that might be a little confusing um, with the title, uh, you know, the, the, the name of the organization. And I think that it's so crucial that all people know that, you know, there are opportunities and services open and available to all people. And so that was something I really wanted us to be able to clarify here. Um, but now that we have a better understanding of what access is, uh, please tell my listeners a bit about yourself and how you got involved with access? Absolutely. So um, I've been in the world of business development or what we call in this space, economic development with a small business development focus um, for a little over 10 years. And actually next year, it'll be 11 years. And so um, me, like everyone else, I was home during the pandemic, just working my small consulting business and um, doing other small projects on the side. So I, I, I pretty much spent the entire core of the pandemic in my home. And so um, I was originally doing this work on the Eastern side of the state. I mean, on the Western side of the state. And as the pandemic hit, I was like, you know, let me get home in case yeah. I'm not able to get back, in case I'm not able to get back over here. And so I pretty much sat idle, just working my business for the last two and a half years. And then um, I got a call from Access about an opportunity that they wanted to um, re-gear up their business development program or what they used to call their growth program. Because like everyone else, during the pandemic, that kind of sat idle, you know, staffing issues, a, a whole host of things. And so they were ready to gear back up in 2022. And so for me, being a lifetime long resident of the Dearborn community, I've, I'm 42. I've been here since I was 18. Mm -hmm. And um, it was like a dream call. I didn't apply for the position. I, <laughs> I don't even know how it landed in my lap, really, or how they got my resume. But they called and they said, you know, you have the expertise we're looking for. We really want to gear this program back up. Are you interested? So I, I, I said, absolutely. Okay. And went through the interview process. It was definitely a very competitive process in terms of they had a number of people wanting to come into this space and um, reactivate that program. And so I was very lucky and very fortunate that they did choose me um, during the selection process. And so um, I got started immediately. And so uh, the whole host of my role with their growth program or what we're now calling our business development program is to help grow and elevate entrepreneurs across Wayne County. And so, and that's exactly what the program entails. That That is just incredible. And, you know, with all that being said, I remember clearly at the conference, uh, the leadership conference where we uh -huh. first met, uh, you telling me you live and breathe your job. And that was so inspiring. It resonated with me so much. Um, the positive energy you release clearly expresses your heartfelt passion to help others, you know, especially female entrepreneurs and some of the young gals that I met there. I, I think, you know, I've already had uh, some podcast recordings with them and it's just been incredible to meet so many people. And it's like I mentioned, you know, I loved when you told me that your goal for those conferences, seminars um, was to make them really small, small scale. I think we had what, 42 people there that day. Yep. Okay. Yep. 42 and, um, women. It was very intimate. Like, and that was your goal. And I just want to tell you that you succeeded with that. Uh, because I think I was able to talk to at least half the women and you know, meet some incredible people. And I love how you've been telling me that they're now connected outside of that meeting, having met them, you know, met each other, some of them for the first time there. And that's yeah. inspiring, Aisha. Yeah. And it is incredible. But yeah. um, can you share with my audience what inspired you to do what you do? Yeah. So, um, you know, I worked for, so how I ended, I, I, you don't just wake up or, you know, as you're charting your journey as a young adult, you don't just say, at least for most people, at least this is what all of my mentors have always told me. You just don't wake up and say, I want to go into economic development as a profession. <laughs> I want to work with small businesses. I, that's just not, that just doesn't happen. Right. And so for me, I was actually a government worker for 10 years before I got into this space. Okay. I worked for the state of Michigan and in an assisting role. So still being somewhat of a servant. Right. Uh -huh. And so I worked for the unemployment agency for about 10 years. And, and we went through a heavy layoff. And so what that did for me is it propelled me to look at my skill set 
And I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always sold things or sold a service. I've always done that. But this really propelled me into doing this on a larger scale because I had worked for the government for 10 years and I thought I was going to retire from there when I turned 65 and I just didn't know what to do. And so as I'm gearing up my business, I end up applying for a position that I didn't know was with an economic development organization. And I had never really heard that term before. I didn't really, I mean, you know, you go through college, you know, economics, right? <laughs> yeah, avoided extent. it, but had to take it. <laughs> yeah, that was the extent of it. And I was trying to figure out how can I not take these courses, Yeah, me right? too. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I ended up landing at this economic development agency um, because one of the things that I do well, which I do so many things and I've realized that I've just got to hone it in in one area, but I used to build databases. Okay. And so Detroit Economic Growth Corporation hired me essentially to work on their database. This organization <laughs> hired me to work on their database. So we're going to hire me to work on their database. But as I started going through the interview process with them, and I'll try and wrap this up because it's it's really a long story, but it's okay. um, they were like, you know, you, we want you to work with the businesses that we support in Detroit and we think you'll be great doing X, Y, and Z. And I was terrified. I was like, huh, you know, this is, a, I've been sitting behind a call center, you know, <laughs> taking on employment calls. Like, I don't think this is my thing. I really build databases. And they were like, no, you're the person for it. And so uh, the rest is history. Oh my So gosh. I started with that organization and I truly learned business acumen. Um, so I was able to educate myself through this organization mm -hmm. on the various tools, the various resources. And then this was a space that I would not leave. So, um, you know, yes, I do step away from work from time to time, but my career is rooted in economic development at this point. So, well, you are started. <laughs> that, that is, that is a story and oh. you are an inspiration and, um, I would love to tell my Dragonfly listeners um, how you did inspire me and that leadership conference inspired me. Um, I had a foot on both sides of the fence. Um, as you well know, I have my food trucks to you company as well as my for Dragonflies and, and, you know, trying to do what I wanted to do at, on the side, what I really dreamed of as, you know, my being able to do full time. And then having my foot on the other side of the fence, working in Dearborn at the chamber. Um, but at that leadership conference, it was the tipping point, I'd like to say, uh, that inspired me to take my leap of faith and just say, you know, I sold my home. Mm -hmm. um, I moved. I got recently married. And my husband and I sat down and I told him, you know, he'd been watching me, you know, work with what I was doing with food trucks and for dragonflies and me. And I told him one day, I said, you know, I said, I really feel I, I can make this happen and I can financially support myself for one year, um, a little bit more, but I'm giving myself a year to make this happen to where it can be, you know, completely financially viable. And yeah. so we sat down and he said, go for it, babe. And I was like, okay, I did. But I just wanted to tell you, Aisha, that conference and you really inspired me. And I cannot tell you thank you enough. Oh, Jean, that means so much to me because I'm always advocating for entrepreneurs and small businesses to take that step, to take that step. Sometimes, you know, you have to step away from that nine to five in order to spark that additional creativity that you may yeah. have in you. Cause when you're, when you're focused on work, you have a commitment there yep. and then your business kind of takes somewhat of a back burner to that. So 100%. for those of us who ha are fortunate enough to be able to step away, to be able from a financial standpoint, to be able to still support our families, to be able to still put food on the table, um, you have to do it because you won't know what that lane looks like if you don't. And you don't exactly. want to ever live in the moment of the what, what if I had done that or, you know. Yep, exactly. So. And I think that's like, you know, so I think I explained to you and if I didn't, I apologize. But my my blog, my for Dragonfly, it focuses primarily on cooking and gardening and organization. Um, but my podcast, the what I wanted to 
add to that was this portion, the entrepreneur part yeah. uh, and giving people who may be listening, like just stumble upon my podcast and like, Oh, that might, that looks interesting and listen to it. And then hear different stories from different business people who may still have a foot on both sides of the fence or who have taken that leap of faith and inspired them. And, you know, that was one of the reasons why I asked you to be one of my guests, because I just felt, you know, you have something to, to share with people. And I wanted to share with my listeners that, you know, it was through your seminar and you that inspired me to take that leap of faith. But, you know, you have an incredible opportunity to provide not only education for entrepreneurs, but potential funding and grants. Can you tell my yes. listeners what types of services Access offers and describe some of the programs available to startups and entrepreneurs? Yeah. So underneath our program um, with Access, and again, we'll pretty much service any b- small business or resident of Wayne County, but we do have a focus in terms of our business development programming and five core cities. So that's Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, um, Detroit, Highland Park, and Hamtramck. Um, And underneath our program, we operate from what I call three prongs. So that's um, educational, uh, education and training and workshops. That's one area. Um, And then we have, which is what I find to be the most intimate part of the work that we do, we offer one-on-one business coaching. And typically the way that the one-on-one business coaching works is that we're coaching clients um, behind a few goals, right? Either through the development of their business plans, through their financial plans, or just exploring what their strategic direction looks like. And we do this over the course of a 30, 60, 90 and 120 day goal plans. But what we've been finding, at least since my tenure here at Access, and then also just talking with other partners that play a role in this space, um, when it comes to the one-on-one coaching, we are definitely helping with everything that I just described. But 2022 has been a very tough year of acclimation for businesses coming off the head of the pandemic. Yeah. So a lot of the work that we're doing is about with our one-on-one coaching sessions is more of talking that person off the ledge if they're thinking about quitting what they're doing in terms of their business or if they get frustrated because they've had a few too many fail forward moments. And so a lot of the work that we're now doing around our one-on-one coaching is all that standardized stuff that I identified, but we're really empowering people to stay grounded and to stay with what they're doing, especially if we find that a client has a solid product that we know can become scalable, or if they have a solid business service that we know can become scalable, sometimes they just need that extra encouragement from someone outside of their immediate circle to really push them into that next area when they're thinking about this might not be for me I might need to go back to something else and Mm so you know our business development coaching is like I said it's one of the most intimate areas and then access this program prior to my tenure with them has been around for 15 years and and has taken various shapes over the years but the third component is we will offer our clients that we are actively working with a microloan. And our microloan is small in nature. It ranges from anywhere between 500 to 5,000. Um, and that just depends on where that business is and in, in their journey and what they are requiring the funds for. We are not a bank. We do not operate as a traditional bank. So essentially, when we think about um, providing a client with a micro loan, it's essentially a character based loan at this point because we the goal is for us to help you grow your business and then for you to pay those funds back over a period of time with no interest. We don't put interest wow. on our loans. Um, and that way we can pay it forward to another business. And so we do a number of those throughout the year, but that's really the core three areas of focus for our business development program is to educate and train, um, coach and empower, and to provide access to capital. Now, the fourth component 
is being a connector in this space as well. Now, Access, we have our core things that we do for our clients, but we're also a part of a huge ecosystem in Southeastern Michigan that helps to support the growth and development of micro entrepreneurs or existing budding businesses. Um, and there's a whole host of resources that are available. While we can only loan up to 5,000, Michigan Women Forward can loan up to 50,000. Wow. So, and yeah, and there are others in this space with either micro loans or grant opportunities. And so one of the core things for us is making sure that we, we are aware of everything that's in the ecosystem so that we can connect the dots. And, you know, that is what I, I am so impressed with. And what another reason why I wanted to have you as a guest, because, you know, of course, if you're in the South, uh, Southeast Michigan uh, area, you know, they, you can definitely provide some uh, services, but also you're a great connector. And so Dragonfly friends, if you have been dreaming of starting your own business, but just don't know how or where to start, this is your opportunity. Aisha can, if nothing else, point you in the right direction or at least try to. Um, so if you have a foot on both sides of that fence and you're just not sure if you should take that leap of faith, today might just be the nudge you need. So Aisha, that's just incredible information. Thank you, Jean. Especially, guys, as you're approaching, right, 2023 is a new year. And so I don't like to do uh, the traditional, what do they do every new year uh, resolutions? <laughs> uh, but I like to set goals whenever yes. new year is approaching. And so this may be that opportunity for you to set a first of the year goal of starting that journey. Yeah, I think so, too. And that's like, again, it's just incredible information and opportunities that you know, people may just be sitting out there stumped and not knowing where to begin and and just needing that guidance and and information that they can't find that may not be easily accessible. And for some people, they may not have availability to the internet. And so going to a library or a friend's house or something, you know, that might be more challenging for them to get that information. So hopefully yeah. anybody listening to today's podcast, um, this will this will give you that nudge again, but um, access has the ability to assist, improve, and empower those in need, and it rests on the support of the community. And listeners, if you feel touched, and if you have, uh, you know, financial or even you know, uh, time as volunteering, you know, you can reach out to access on their uh, visit the donation page to find out how you can help them change lives today and build a legacy for tomorrow. But thanks for joining me today. And Aisha, thank you for sharing what access can do for folks who want to start their own business and the steps on how to do it with all of my listeners. So thank you again for taking the time. You're welcome, Jean. And if you don't mind, before we cut this out, I yeah. would like to go back to the leadership series. Oh, yes, please. Um, because I think we didn't we didn't touch on that and just explain, you know, where that came from and, and where we're going with that. So leadership was something that I actually started about, I don't know, three or four years ago. And okay. it's one of those things that never got its footing right. I just, I knew I wanted to do something with women business owners and I wanted to create something unique. And this is what me as an entrepreneur, the way that I'm always thinking is what the next project can I do? And anyways, this is one of those projects that I kind of just set aside. And so um, I decided to um, roll it into my programming at Access and um, and, and launch it there. That's and awesome. so we did our, yeah, we did our first one November 1st. Which is and, the one I attended, right? Yes. Okay. And like you said, you know, the goal was, the whole theme of that event was to harness the power of networking and to really bring together a group of small, you know, very intimate setting, but enough women where there could be some synergies and some connection is that, and as Jean, as you mentioned, these ladies are now, they yeah. are now best buds. Um, <laughs> a lot of these ladies that I didn't know, and I'm now directly connected with, and we're all just, you know, chatting and, and exploring things and, and, and putting things on the table and strategizing together collectively for a common goal of growth for everyone. And so um, we'll be doing another series um, come March 1st, 
we selected to do this in March versus January because it's Women's History Month and mm -hmm. and women are leading in business right now. We we started the we have the largest number in terms of startups since 2018. And so I think it's important that we share our story during Women History Month and we talk about some of those challenges that women in business have faced and how have they gotten through those hurdles. So Jean, I look forward to having you out on March 1st. Oh, you know, I'll be there. If there's anyone else that may be interested in joining, um, you know, definitely reach out to Jean and let her know if you're in the area, because we'd love to um, tie this out to more people yeah. um, and still keeping it intimate, but opening up it to more women, because we know that that encouragement and that that additional empowerment is so critical. Yeah. And on that note, Aisha, do you think that there would be an opportunity to have a Zoom option for people outside of the area? Um, I'm, I know from the first, the November 1st um, uh, meeting, you know, it is intimate and it is personal. Um, I don't know if there would be a value to a Zoom meeting. Um, there uh -huh. could be definitely be a value to a Zoom meeting. I am uh, exploring that as an option. Uh, towards the end of the year. Awesome. So, okay. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, but, or we could, you know, our team and I are thinking of creative ways to spread this out to the masses because again, uh, access is the largest Arab American community organization in the United States. And we do get a lot of people that reach out to us for various wanting to tap various areas of our programming that are not available or that we typically don't have available in other areas outside of Wayne County. So okay. this could very well be a new opportunity for us to bring together a core collective of women from all over um, and start something new. Yeah, I kind of see like a round table, but with computers, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Because yeah, I mean, it, I can see people from all over the country being interested in something like that. And I can really see yes. uh, other organizations wanting to develop something similar to this because it's a great idea and uh, bringing yes. women together like this. But I wanted to, I, before we wrap it up, one more thing, like I said, uh, we, we could probably okay. talk for hours, right? But um, I would love for you to share one last thing. So at the seminar, you actually, and I answered incorrectly, asked, um, what, how many female businesses uh, did we think were actually out there? And so tell my listeners what that number is, if you know it off the top of your head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh boy, I put you on the spot. It I'm is, sorry. oh God, Lee, I usually know this number too. It is, um, let's see here. Um, I, I guessed way under. You did guess way under and what it, oh God, Jean, you've got me on the spot here. I don't know the number offhand. I typically do, but it's a very, very, um, it was like here. into the hundred thousands, wasn't it? It's yes. Yes. Okay, good. Well, listeners, I'm sorry. And Aisha, I should, That's okay. oh, I should have put that in the chat first. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Cause I generally know it, but it is Christmas and, uh, yeah, I am. I am not all the way there. Yeah, that's okay. Um, here, that's I'll tell okay. you, know, I have it. And there are <laughs> roughly 12 million women-owned businesses in the U.S. currently right now. Yeah, and I remembered it being an, an exuberant number like that. And I was just so impressed. But yes. uh, um, is there anything else you would like to share with my listeners before we wrap it up? Um, I would just like to say, you know, if there's anyone that would like to get connected with Access um just reach out to us go to our website uh, we have a lot of information on there um and if you want to connect with me directly i think gene can point you in the right direction but Absolutely. again gene thank you for having me it's been nothing but a pleasure oh always but um to learn more about access you can go to my blog at for dragonfliesandme.com or like aisha said visit them at accesscommunity.org and all of those links will be on my blog as well as facebook uh the facebook event friend so you'll be able to find clickable links there to connect uh with either aisha or myself but again thank you for joining me here today and thank you, Aisha, for sharing, again, what access can help other people with, and especially female entrepreneurs. Uh, but now, listeners, uh -huh. please follow me here and at my blog at fordragonfliesandme.com. And if you haven't visited me on Facebook, 
there yet, please like and follow me for daily inspiration, recipes, and gorgeous photos. Until next time, friends, happy day.